welcome to the Aperture Photo Book Club. We are so thrilled uh, to have everyone join us today. We are delighted to be gathering to discuss Ari Markopoulos zines. And as we get into that, I'm going to call on my colleague, Leslie Martin, Aperture's esteemed editor-at-large and the editor of this wonderful volume, and ask Leslie if she would do the introductions for Roger, as I say in English, and R. Leslie? Sure. Thanks, Sarah, and thanks to Ari and to Roger for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to work with both of you. Um, I followed both of your works and had so much respect for years, so it was great to join in this practice. I'm going to introduce Ari first. Um, Ari is maybe best known uh, for documenting subculture and scenes of skateboarding and hip hop, but the work is so much more than that as well. It's the observation of gestures, of relationships, and of life as we live it today. Also, Ari is a hardcore bookmaker, zine maker, Xerox aficionado. I think of Ari's practice as really pictures on pages. And um, Ari did move to the US from the Netherlands in 1980, where he worked for two polar opposites, Andy Warhol and Irving Penn. And I think somewhere in there, that, that synthesis is Ari. His work can currently be seen at the Center for Canadian Architecture in the show, The Lives of Documents, Photography as Project, and will also be on view at a, for a big show opening at the Brooklyn Museum of Art in the fall on zines as art practice. Then thank you, Roger, for joining us from Amsterdam. Um, Roger is an amazing book designer, director, and publisher of Roma edition of Roma Publications. Roma was founded in 1998 by Roger, along with the artists Mark Manders and Mark Nagsam. Roma is a platform as well as a publisher and um, Based in Amsterdam, they uh, Roma hosts an amazing design studio and exhibition space called Enter Enter, which recently hosted an exhibition of Ari's zines related to this publication, which I think we'll see in the background when Roger joins us. And um, yeah, as a publisher, Roma has made many, many books, including several that have been selected for the Perry Photo Aperture Foundation Photo Book Awards, for example, Donna, by Donna Lixenberg, by Bacha Suter, and also including One Wall, a Web by Stanley Walakau Wanamba, which was winner of the first photo book prize in 2018. So thank you again to both of you for joining us today to talk about this book. Yeah, I'm in Amsterdam, in um, my studio, uh, which is uh, behind the curtain in the back. And this is the front room where we run exhibitions, um, always related to books. Um, I share the studio and this project space together with Hans Kremer from uh, FW Books and uh, Ayumi Gucci, uh, freelance graphic designer, also joins us in the studio. Um, it's located in the center of Amsterdam. I'm looking out of the window uh, uh, at the water and past the rice. And uh, what you see behind me is the installation that uh, uh, we made for the presentation of uh, Zines, the book by Ari, we uh, will talk about now. And uh, on this side. Yeah, show us a yeah, little. A huge. Yeah, okay. So here you see a table with uh, a selection of zines, 32 zines that we printed uh, from PDFs that were not printed before. And they are also uh, uh, an important part, the main part of the book. These were all zines uh, published between 2020 and 21, uh, all during the pandemic. And uh, there, yeah, we will talk about it more if we talk about the book. But here they are all uh, to 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 browse through, and um, uh, the book itself is here uh, on the wall. We painted one of the titles of the scenes that you have on the table, and on the other wall, we did a wallpaper 
of two older zines from 2015, um, which could be basically every sequence of any zine uh, we have here, or also that are presented in the book, because I, I, I think it was nice to show that uh, even though the books are small and modest in their size and, and, and production uh, method, they carry a lot of uh, very powerful information and, and, and images. And this is about a, a road trip uh, with Kara Walker in the south of the United States with, on the bottom, a line of, of mostly sketches and work from the studio from Kara. Uh, and especially in this uh, zines of this uh, these two years during the pandemic, yeah, Kara is, is appearing very often. But I don't know, maybe I'm now saying too much. We should talk about no, it. That's together. a great that's a great introduction. Um, Sarah, did you want me to introduce the book a little bit? And then Ari, we sure. can have you jump in and talk about it. Um, I'll say that I entered this project uh, when it was already in dummy form, having been conceived and put together by Roger and Ari. And basically, the form of the book today, as it's published, which you can see a little video of, I think, um, is, as uh, Roger said, it's a survey of zines from roughly 2015 through 2021. And the book consists entirely of photographs of the individual zines that have been an integral part of Ari's practice for many years. And it's, so it's simultaneously a record of this practice. It's a record of Ari's daily life. And then it's also a record of the pandemic where we see the world go from wide meanderings with trips to Rome, to Paris and elsewhere to a very tight circle around Ari's home, his neighborhood during the lockdown. When the zines became more of a digital undertaking than a physical production process. And the zines in PDF form served as letters to email to friends and to family and for keeping touch. And those you see in the book placed on the black background, as you see here. So you get this sort of cracking of the world in half into these two sort of pre-pandemic and during pandemic, the wider world and the interior world of pandemic times or pandemania, as Ari, you title one of the zines. There's also great contributing essays. There's a statement by Ari that talks about the work. There's a wonderful essay by Maggie Nelson. And there's an in-depth, really wonderful um, conversation between Hamza Walker and Ari. So there's a lot of context. You get this full flow of images and a sense of an overview of um, almost six years of work. I think that pretty much encapsulates what this wonderful book is about. Ari, did I, did I do OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> um, I'm Ari Markopoulos. Um, and like it says on the screen, I'm a photographer and a filmmaker um, working out of New York. Um, um, this, this book really um, came about um, during the beginning years, the beginning year of the pandemic. And um, um, Roger and I, uh, or Roger and I, uh, work very, very, very close together um, for many years, and um, so this idea was sort of floating in our heads. But at the same time, um, I was talking to Leslie about possibly doing something with Aperture, and um, so I suggested um, this project that was um, sort of quite loose still. I mean, when you see the dummy, it looks like it was really together, but um, we just had a very loose idea of how to do it. And then when um, I told uh, Roger, like, you know, uh, I would like to do this book with Aperture, um, would you be interested in designing it? And he, uh, 
he, and he was, and so then he threw, literally threw that dummy together <laughs> in a very short time, <laughs> which um, I always, um, when people ask me to describe um, uh, Ro Roger, um, I usually say that he's, um, he's my enabler yeah, because <laughs> I, uh, I, love I love making books and so does he. And um, he's always open for any ideas. Not that he does everything that I say, because then he wouldn't be really making books for anybody else. And which is a, a very important part of his practice is that he does work with a lot of different artists, and that he um, um, listens uh, and looks very well. He uses both his eyes and ears and then his mind to help you um, manifest the ideas that are always not so clear. Although once you see a finished book, uh, you don't often see how much work went into it. Although I believe that this particular book um, has um, it, this might be presumptuous to say, but um, um, it does have a whole new way of looking at photography. Even though the book, because of its title, is about scenes, and the word scenes for, I think most people watching will know what scenes are, but just in case that scenes are basically when you photocopy um, books or pages and then bind them and put them together and usually it's you just take an eight and a half by eleven page fold it in half and print it back to back and then staple it uh, and that's an it's a great way I think for people that are not published or for artists to actually look at their work in book form and, um, Ari, could I interrupt for a second? Because I actually, I love that you went there. Can we, is it possible to see all of four of us together so we can talk together? Ah, beautiful. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, so that was actually our first audience question was what is a zine? And I think you answered it in like the simplest uh, way. It's fundamentals, although I'd like to actually see if uh, Roger and Leslie define it the same way. Um, and maybe while you're answering that, you'd also just sort of say, what do you love about zines? Because I think we've talked a lot about photos and we'll get into turning zines into a book as you all have done. But maybe we just expand a little more on what Ari was saying. Does everyone agree on this definition of zine? Yeah, sure. Well, okay. I mean, Two. the best way to show it is, um, uh, let, let's see if there's no information on here. No, not really. This is a piece of 8 and 11 paper. This happens to be some sort of bill, right? With some, um, I, with some notes of it. It says, the English understand wool, the last samurai and lightning rods. Oh, oh these are Helen the Witt books. Anyhow, so, so this is an 8 and a half by 11 piece of paper and then when you fold it in half right it turns into four pages one two three four so whenever you make a zine in a simple way that you staple you always have it always has to be divisible by four so you can make a four page zine which is just one piece of paper etc etc and um the the amazing thing about that is that um you can, you can just, you know, anybody can do, anybody can do it. It's not a very complicated process. Um, now, if it is a good scene, then that is another matter. Um, but um, what do you mean by so, that? Uh, well, yeah, how do you define so, a good zine? It, it's so easy to make that it's really up to, the, it's up to the, it's up to the viewer to decide if it's good or bad. I'm just saying that you you can make it it doesn't have to be like the ultimate thing in the world and you don't have to 
if you go to a publisher, they have their criteria for what they would accept as a book that they will publish. But if you make it yourself, the criteria are your own. So you can really actually, you have a lot of freedom to do what you, wa what you want. That said, um, Aperture gave me a lot of freedom to do what I want because they trusted me. And, uh, and they've also seen you know, the work that I've done previously. Um, Roger, did you have it? Were you holding something you wanted to share? Yeah, to illustrate uh, the, the scenes, I could pick up every, uh, anything on the table or fit through the book, of course. Um, but yeah, what I, what I like is yeah, it's the simpleness, but, but also the democratic aspect, because it's really something to share easily. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, I think, also what, what uh, it came out very nice in the interview with Hamza, how, 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 how his scenes uh, are a really great tool to, to uh, um, yeah, to, to, to share it with, with people, also bring it to people that you just photograph and then go back and, um, but yeah. Uh, Would you talk a little I think bit for, for, about, oh sorry. Would you talk a little bit yeah. about the process that Ari said, yeah. if you just, you know, threw it together and what the path from there? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, like this was the first sketch I made. Uh, this is a self-made dummy. No, I, I don't call it a zine, but it's it's more like a uh, first pile of prints um, of the older zines that that uh, Ari put on the scanner, flathead scanner, sent it to me, and. I was surprised by uh, these two layers, like two rows of, of, of scenes, um, that you get as coincidental uh, combinations. And I think the, what Ari said about throwing it together was also because I thought it's about scenes uh, and, and there's a kind of looseness in it and not, not this uh, precious treatment of the pictures. So I thought that that could also be a good starting point. And Besides that, I knew it had to be a lot and not uh, uh, just a very tiny selection. It had to be like a, a, a big, almost like an endless uh, source uh, book of, of, of things to discover. So, and and um, then it's also great to have uh, an element of, 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 of uh, uh, chance that that you don't uh, compose everything in a very very uh, uh, yeah uh, decided way but more like playing around with it and and see what happens when you, when you make a flow so i made this one big flow with the old scenes and i made another one with with the new ones the pdfs that were not printed so they had also another quality and i, I kind of mixed them together uh, which gave another clash of the new and the old ones and the, the, the printed ones and the, the clean PDFs. So I, th I thought uh, to do that fast and, and uh, spontaneously uh, was the best attitude for, for this book. And we stayed close to that, I think. It's of course, it's a lot of work later to find you because when, when you have, there was a dummy like double tick uh, and then you, you start uh, also looking carefully where you should uh, like take out things. And also we decided to make many pages larger. Um, and then, yeah, you have, you have your limitations because I, I knew also that, that uh, uh, yeah, the, the book also shouldn't be too precious uh, and also a bit, bit not an easy thing to take away. And, hopefully also not too expensive uh, to buy. So, yeah, I, 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 uh, I had to stick to a certain amount of pages and, and uh, economic size. And uh, within this framework, we could, we could kind of uh, come to very uh, also um, 
surprising combinations and spreads and also keep the idea of the, of the, the feeling of the scenes in it like also the white pages that you could easily skip out and think it's a waste of pages to have empty pages but they're also appearing in the scenes uh, in a very uh, yeah, frequent frequent uh, way so these are things that that uh, yeah were part of the process and i like very much to listen to ari of course uh, if i go through all the images and he points to me which are important details which maybe no one knows then i immediately make a note and enlarge it or and i kick out something that where, where he doesn't show any interest so it's it's what ari says it's i i take the lead in the kind of composition first and then i i try to listen carefully to get the input to make it more uh, interesting to follow Ari's thoughts. Yeah. Well put. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, oh, I, I do think that. Oh, go ahead, Les. Sorry. Oh, just the, the ethos of the book it is very much in keeping with that sort of um, fluid and organic democratic feel of the subject matter itself so i really appreciate that aspect of it for me the most important thing is really that um, um the content of the book talks about uh, the passing of time and it also talks about a time that none of us uh, have experienced in our life before where um, the whole world was engulfed in a pandemic uh, and there were a lot of unknowns and um, we haven't seen many works about this yet and actually the pandemic has sort of been swept under the rug you know um, everybody started traveling again everybody's going about his business and um if you do wear a mask even if you wear a mask that's because you're afraid of um you know allergies or there was you know recently we had a lot of smoke from the canadian wildfires here in new york um it, it's uh, very rare to see um people wearing masks and and people prefer not really to talk about it anymore and there's not many artworks out there that are really dealing with it i think this is a very early um book that actually deals with this period and it's emphasized by um maggie nelson's essay and so um of course i would like everybody that doesn't have the book now to um if they have any interest in it to to get it but i feel um two three four five six seven years from now um this will be one of many more um works that deal with the history of this extraordinary period that we went through and um so it's not just you know, a book about zine practice. We called it zines because this is one of the forms that I use. Just as I, um, you know, uh, Leslie mentioned the, the exhibition in Canada, but um, I, at the moment I also have a solo exhibition up at Maki Gallery in Tokyo, which is a very different way of dealing um, with photography because it's on the wall it's you know you have bigger prints or what, what whatever um but of course books are a very um natural way to show photography and they're also a very good way to um keep photography to archive your images because you know um now especially with all the digital images that are being made we have no idea what's going to happen to that like, you know and um i was listening to tim davis the other day and another photographer who um, 
who has a book out with the uh, aperture and uh, he mentioned you know um, that he's getting color prints back from collectors because they're fading <laughs> and so he has to reprint them and um, you know books don't really fade you know they really stay and um, so that I feel is uh, also very interesting in 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 making making books yeah i mean i do think that this works so much so well as a record again of this sort of the before the after the between times and i wonder if you and roger could speak to the way in which the zines that you made before as physical objects you would take them down to the copy shop and then the zines that you were making while sort of in lockdown in the digital space, how those are treated in the book, what, how they differ to you. Of course, now they exist in phys physical form right behind you, Roger, which is great to see. But maybe, uh, Ari, do you want to start off? And then, Roger, you can also speak to that question. Well, I think Roger sort of mentioned it that you know, there's a, a double timeline uh, against that word, the, the physical zines sc scanned, and that double timeline um, is the zines put onto the scanner, and you actually see sometimes, because, you know, you don't always staple them right, you can actually see the folds and the sort of, and you can see the sometimes you know the copies are not so great um, um, so you can see that quality of it and then um, the actual PDFs that I that were really sent out as letters to friends at that time you know I could I was still wanting to um, make um, books or even look at my work in a serial way um, those are pr printed um, directly from the files uh, of the digital files of the photographs and they are more shown in the traditional uh, photographic book way and, um, and then placed against the black background so that as a viewer, you, um, there you go, a good example, you can, there, it's kind of like a code so you can quickly understand, you know, um, what you're what you're looking at and, yeah um, mm -hmm. and roger maybe you can speak to sort of what you were thinking in creating this sort of how you supported yeah. the double timeline yeah that was a very welcome element to to also make really clear the, the this the, this difference between the printed scenes which are printed on on this bulky paper and also Embrace the imperfections of the of the of the self-made zines with all the foldings and glossy parts, or like like there's there's a lot of imperfection, and then the the the, the PDFs that are really crispy and sharp, printed on a coated paper, uh, mm. yeah, which which is something that was very welcome to create this uh, also formal tension of two bodies of, of, of work mm -hmm. and yeah I think I think it also yeah it had to be a bit clear but I also like to have this clash and that it becomes like a, uh, not so clear at the same time because right. you have to discover and you can trace back which scene is what because there is an index with with uh, with the covers in the mm -hmm. beginning and every zine that is printed is not entirely reproduced, but always it starts with a cover and it ends with a back side. Um, yeah. So with, with, with some attention, you can figure out how, how, how the things are individually looking, but um, it becomes also a new composition with these two feelings. Yeah. No, I, I think it's really effective. And I actually want to um, turn now to a few of the audience questions, because we have a number of questions that have been coming in. So, um, you know, you, you talk about the serendipity, both of you talk about the serendipity of the sequences coming together, but 
in this particular book, one of the questions from the audience is, can you talk about the attention to sequencing when creating a zine? And maybe Ari, you could begin and then just in terms of sequencing, I mean, Roger, this is something you think about, it'd be great to hear from you as well, but Ari, sequencing, how do you approach it? Well, you know, there's many ways to um, approach sequencing. Um, I mostly um, approach sequencing um, often um, in time. Um, so I, the, the images will be um, sort of sequenced in when I took them, but not always. Um, sometimes you think about um, what, com you know, a nonlinear way, um, what combinations work well. And um, I, I feel mostly um, because I have done so many books and I've done books that have a lot of pages. You know, I did a book with 1200 pages. So um, I think that uh, a lot of my books are about sequencing and they're about it's kind of a, a cinematographic way of looking at, at it. I, I feel that um, the books are more like movies as you as you move through them, and then and then you um, something um, starts either um, you be, it becomes clear um, what is um, or, or what what things I am noticing more because of. You know, whatever you see in the book is, you know, what I am seeing, I'm also choosing. But um, I feel that, um, you know, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's kind of an obvious answer to the question because I believe as soon as you decide when you have a group of photographs um, to put them together in a book, the first thing that comes up is how do I sequence this? So, you know, that's something you give thought and, you know, and then maybe you don't always try to do it the same way. But um, most of the scenes I've done usually deal with a period that just passed. You know, it's like, okay, I'm making a scene of the last three months or I'm making a zine of last week, or I'm making a zine of this particular um, few days where I went um, on a trip, and I'm making a zine of that. And um, and, I, and, and one example is um, in my uh, dealings with um, Roger, we made a book about um, Exarchia in Athens, which is a the so-called anarchist neighborhood of Athens, which is really covered in graffiti and um, we were actually very abstractly talking about books, and so I sent um, Roger some folders with different groups of photographs, and then he opened this one folder and he says, I noticed that all these photos were taken in one afternoon from like seven minutes after one in the afternoon till 10 minutes before five. And he says, do you think, you know, can I work with that idea? And I said, yeah, why not? So he took all those photographs and he didn't edit any of them out and put them all in the order of the time that they were shot because it was a digital camera. So there was, um, you know, uh, metadata in, in order for him to determine that. And then he titled the book, you know, Exarchia, whatever the date was and the times that the photographs were shot. And um, so that was actually sort of automatic sequencing, you know, that mm. was not uh, me sequencing. And then there yeah. you have the class, you have classic examples of like, um, you know, Walker Evans, American photographs or Robert Frank, the Americans, where you very clearly see um, that uh, a lot of thought went into sequencing the book. And, mm. and you always, and um, you know, um, and it, you got to remember when you have a book, it's a very intimate experience because the book is in your lap and mm -hmm. you open it, you open it and then you flip through. And so you're always seeing the spread. You're not 
Yeah. You know, it's not possible to look through the whole book. But, yeah. I can show it uh, from this book. I think it was uh, like an exercise of, of sequencing sequences because all the zines have a very strong outspoken sequence. Mm -hmm. And uh, then some of the pages try to show this filmic sequences. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. What page numbers are those so people can follow along oh. at home if they have the book? The 68 and 69. Mm -hmm. So this is yeah a good example where where the, the, the even though an individual picture is is not very much different than the other, together they make this 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 movement and at the same time or in in in, in other pages we decide to focus on on a single picture. Um, so yeah, there, so you're there creating is a, rhythms and pacing even with as you said sequences yes. of sequences. Yeah. So I'm going to go on to another audience question then, because I think there we could talk about sequencing all day almost. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a practical question for Ari. How do you usually print your zines with your own printers or at a printing shop or somewhere else? And what type of paper do you like to use for zines? And I think. That's actually something you see in the book. There's many different types of papers, and how do you choose? Oh, where you print seeds wherever you can, anytime, <laughs> anytime. If you go, you know, if you got your files on you and you have it, yeah. You, if you find a copy machine, you just use it. You know, and mm -hmm. you go to a copy shop. You do it at home. Um, you do it. I was I once at a zine workshop at the uh, Photo Museum Winter Tour, and um, you know not to put Photo Museum Winter Tour down, but they didn't pay for hotel. They just said you can stay in the apartment at the museum, and um, there was um, the apartment was connected to their offices, and they had this amazing printer with a black and white toner, and uh, they also had stacks of this um, Italian paper not fancy but it was an Italian sort of creamy very nice paper so you know when the in the evenings you know I was just in their office um, printing out making zines like you know <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 rem I remember after two days the off the office door was locked <laughs> because <laughs> I had used all, all the toner and all the paper it so. is classically a guerrilla art form right uh, yeah well you know uh, yeah it, it is of course classically um a lot of protest movements use the zine and also um uh you know uh skateboarders on the east coast um were making a lot of zines because most of the skateboard magazines were west coast so featuring west coast skaters or a lot of you know a lot of punk bands made zines and uh um, Black Panthers made made scenes or pamphlets. It's really that's really where it comes from, right? It's or um, hobbyists, you know. I don't know people doing things that were not talked about or published. They they would make uh, you know they make their own books. So yeah, but I think that yeah. um, th the main thing is that you don't. It doesn't have to be precious, you know. You, you can go as far as you want. Like, you know, you can have a color laser printer that reproduces color pretty well and and all of that. But, you know, you can also just have a funky black and white printer, you know. I, I don't think, you know, the more uh, ways of printing and paper you use, the more you learn about how uh, an image can work, you know. And um, th that's... Uh, that's why yeah. you can show Xeroxes or you can show color C prints or you can, you know, there's many ways to uh, go go about it. And I feel also that, you know, like this is said in the interview that I use um, the zine as a gift to 
like you know I, um, when I um, take photographs or when I visit someone that hosted hosted me or showed me around in a way to show my appreciation um, I'll magazine um, you know I mean uh, Roger just had inv invited me to um, Belgium and to meet um, Mark Manders um, who, who he together uh, and Mark Noxham started um, Roma with and uh, I made two books <laughs> and um, both Roger and uh, Mark are still waiting for them but uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> there you go yes oh so, tantalizing so you know that's yeah that's um i mean i guess to put a finer point on it somebody from the audience has asked do you think zines are defined by their materials and binding like at what point like those look very beautifully made and bound so are they still zines are they books where do you where do you draw the line oh i don't draw the line zines are books. you don't make it yeah you don't make it intentionally uh, rubbish but you take it how it co comes. And sometimes it becomes beautiful uh, by accident. Yeah, I think I think that you can be very slick, slick about it. Like uh, like these are, you know, that they, they have a glue binder and you know. But you can do this at home, you know. And there's only there's only um, uh, you know. I have one. Mark has one. And Roger has has one has one of this. You so know, it's not anybody scene, else. And I mm. feel that. Uh, you know uh, the difference. Uh, I, I mean, th the difference is blurring, of course, because books used to be offset printing, but now you have digital offset printing. Mm -hmm. So in, in in digital offset, um, how that changed, how it works is so when you offset print, you have to decide ahead of time: do we make five hundred books, or a thousand books, or five thousand books, or ten thousand books? You know depending on um, what you anticipate the sales of the book to be. And in zines, um, you know, you usually, you're pushing it if you make 100 zines, because if you photocopy 100 zines, there's a significant amount of money involved in, in doing that. And <laughs> less so if you print it at, at, if, if you print it at home, or when you talk about Gorilla, I don't want to encourage anyone to do this, but you know, we did used to print zines for free. We had we found our ways. You know, back in the day. You know, you, sorry, Kate. Also, I don't, yeah, it's also you shouldn't underestimate like the act of really making something. Especially now we're used to everything circulates digital or or like fancy printed. But it's it's also we printed this 32 zines here when Ari was here. And then at a certain point, we are both cutting and, and, and then the, we, we, we go out to meet the copy shop guy and then we print some here. And we felt like uh, also like schoolboys uh, trying to make a good scene. Uh, and that process of, of, of making something physical and then also responding on what you have in your hands and, and trying to find solutions for, for problems that appear. That's a very basic, uh, uh, yeah, and also also a joy, and mm. uh, and, a, and and a way of of learning things. And I I always yeah. start not with scenes, but I always try to start with with making the the material that I get from an artist. I try to also make physical by by making a really elementary uh, dummy, uh, mm -hmm. just to have it. Yeah, in your hands, and also to to get used to the material, uh, to have it around you, and and can, that you can bring it home, and also talk about it with people, and that's yeah. something think... super useful. And that's 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 same with with scenes, uh, like for me, dance yeah. function. I think the best way I can say say it, a book is not a zine, but a zine is a book. <laughs> Very good, and. A dummy is sometimes also a zine, perhaps. But I have another follow-up question from somebody in the audience about when I mean, you just showed the new zine that you have in an edition of three. And do you always edition your zines? Does one edition zines? No, not really. I mean, you know, 
Um, now you have publishers that do zines like Neves in Switzerland or, you know, there's many different ones, but I've done a lot with Neves, so he pops into my head. And he was Dashwood. one of the earlier ones. Dashwood does zines. And they usually, um, well, Dashwood, yeah, they usually number them because there's something, you know, um, I think that has to do with the fact that people like the idea, okay, there's only 50 of these and I'm one that has one. But I mm -hmm. typically don't um, number my zines, you know, and I print them sometimes, you know, um, especially when I do it at home, like at some point you get tired, right? Because, you know, I've hand sliced so many, like, <laughs> you know, and you do it and then you're like, okay, this is enough, you know, like I made 40, it's enough, you know, and it's, <laughs> and I feel that is also a good way to say, okay, that's it next next you know i'm working on the next one you know um so yeah but i feel you know that's up really up to the maker you know that's like i don't feel me myself i don't i haven't really when i made i, I didn't send this to roger and mark and wrote one of three you know that it's mm -hmm. not you know, it's just a <laughs> it's like a, it's like we will make them a little fat yeah, 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 family. yeah. I'll leave it up to Roger. He'll say, "Okay, we'll make we'll make a thousand of these. We'll go offset." Right. Yeah, but I, I like so. what you say in the interview, Ari. You say a zine you can give away very easily. You make it, you give it. That's it. You don't necessarily have to count it. It's there. It's a gift. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go back into the some of the questions and um, one of the questions deals with um, the the question of text and a photo book the question reads the photo book must deal with the weight of text as narrative as well as design as much as images this is what distinguishes them from zines says the question do you have any thoughts either of you about that not true you can write, you can write, you can put text in a Z. I mean, I think, I think, I think people should not be stuck up on the idea of a difference between a zine and a book. A zine, like a zine, basically anybody can make. I think that's the biggest difference. You can teach someone in three minutes how to make a zine and they can do it however they want. They can use their own photographs. They can use clips from the um, uh, from magazines and newspapers. Um, they can rub dirt on the pages. Uh, they can they can print out text on the paper on, on on the zine. They can talk about their pictures. They can hand write. If you make one zine, you can hand write your text in it. I mean, this is really um, mm -hmm. now. I yeah. do understand what they're saying. That yes, when there is a Photo, a photo book then yeah there's often like an essay involved uh, either by the photographer or by a uh, by another writer or you can add a text and but it's that's really not you know you can also do photo books <laughs> without any text you know which i have done like just like mm -hmm. there's, like the exarchia so, book the rohan i did is just photos there's no text mm -hmm. Let me ask um, Roger how you feel that the addition of text impacts how you are thinking about bringing a body of work together on a page, whether zine or book form. In general? In general, uh, yeah. yeah. Text can be essential, but can also be disturbing. I mean, uh, I aim to make books with artists that come close to their practice and uh, I, I also feel that many artists are not so much interested in uh, like introductionary texts or like framing something, uh, institutional contributions. Uh, uh, so then I also try to leave them out. Um, and that's sometimes like a bit like a fight, but but there's also very often uh, very interesting text that, that you cannot do without. 
but it's mm. it's more that uh, uh, I think it's more like a difference also between zines and and, and published books. The difference between uh, the freedom to make something that that really suits you and more institutional way of producing or publishing books. And there is conventions that people follow also to make it more accessible maybe, but that's something that I'm very critical uh, towards mm. because yeah, that often uh, creates a distance between uh, yeah, r really what the, what the artist aims uh, and, and me as a designer then. Uh, and, and it becomes also a message of, of, of other people and institutions. Mm. It's a difference of being in the book or looking at the book or looking at the work from a... From yeah, but a it's always, always, you're always negotiating. And I think that's a very beautiful tension because you, you don't want to make it alone all by yourself. You're always uh, dealing with people. And, and you also need uh, institutions. But I think the reason that I started my own publishing house is that I, I that I can make my own decisions about how much and uh, also the whole idea of what should be on a cover or what is a title uh, or what kind of blurb do you put on the backside. So I maybe, think, I think uh, huh? yeah. Maybe that's a good way for a last question is to yeah. talk about the cover and how you all uh -huh. came to this because that's one of the things how, how that's similar to and different from the prototype i'd love to yeah. have that yeah. be our last question and then we'll yeah because it changed for for yeah for a long time we thought of making more like a craft cover with with a single image um but yeah, at the end, you, 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 you keep also searching for uh, maybe better solutions. And I think the book is like a mix of many images and, and, and uh, also most conflicting images. So we, we tried out some cutouts, like almost random uh, parts from the interior. And um, that, that seemed to work. So I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I like think the, co the yeah the cover was um, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting, right? Um, wow. And then we also we had to choose some color because first we somehow forgot to think about a color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was. A, I think this is the first sketch of the craft in combination with the sequence. Uh, and. We had like this one, eh? with the, the barber, yeah. mm -hmm. the barber shop. Yeah. And there was this guy in the back looking yeah. in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that the cover really spe speaks a little bit about, you know, the interior and the, and also um, the, the, the way that mul multiple images um, work to uh, bring in one story and also, if you look that, um, if you look at the picture um, that is in the middle on the bottom, that is um, the that is the column where once um, the Confederate general uh, Robert E. Lee stood and he was removed. So there is also, you know, um, mm -hmm. some political. Um, I don't say statement, but you know, there's there's a there's a certain co there's a content to that, and uh, and then yes. um, and and th that's um, something. Mm -hmm. And then there's multiple there's multiple images, which kind of as you um, open the book, there's a, a flap that folds out a little bit, but it actually goes straight into a continuation of the cover, right? It goes from the cover to the book. It's almost like you're um, you're seeing you're seeing the interior of the book already on the out, on the outside, right? Yeah, there. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been much help because of my audio issues, but I'm loving hearing all of you speak about this and really bringing such insight into something that seems so 
anarchic. <laughs> there's, mm -hmm. there's something, I love what you're saying, Ari, about how it just doesn't matter. You know, a, a zine is something that anyone can make, but I might argue a book, somebody could make something and call it a book. My nieces and nephews do that all the time. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. It means so much. And thank you to our production team, Clark, and thank you to our Aperture colleagues, Brianna and Alex. You're wonderful. And thank you to PhotoFo for sponsoring us and making all of this possible. And we'll just conclude with the idea that whether you print a book and publish it with the publisher, you decide to call it your own, the Aperture photo books are now open. And this is a wonderful call for entry that Leslie runs with Alex. And it's an incredible opportunity for us to see what's happening in the field. So um, that is open and we would love to see what you're up to. Um, but thank you again, everyone, and have a great afternoon or evening if you're in Amsterdam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.